This is Advanced Algebra Lesson 6 for the graph of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. We learned in a previous lesson that the standard form for a quadratic equation is in fact y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Any equation written in vertex form is y minus k equals a times x minus h squared and that we can rewrite that into standard form. So we studied in our in our last lesson about how if we knew the vertex of our gra of our parabola and we knew the value for a we could we could write an equation for our parabola well sometimes once we have that equation in vertex form we need it in standard form enable in order to work with it further or we just need to be able to go back and forth so one of the skills that we're going to be working on in this lesson is taking us an equation from standard form and putting it into I'm sorry putting an equation from vertex form into standard form I have an example worked out here for us so that you can use to follow the, the question says show that the equation y plus 5 equals 4 times the quantity of x plus 3 squared and that it can be written in the form of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c and give the values of a, b, and c. So to begin with, we start by moving 5 over to the other side by subtracting 5 from both sides. Then we're going to explain, expand the x plus 3 squared. And we know using the binomial square theorem from one of the previous lessons, we can square the x term, we can square the 3, that gives us the 9, and we can take the product of 3 times x times 2, which would give us 6x. So then we'll need to distribute the 4 throughout. So 4 times x squared gives me 4x squared. 4 times 6x gives me 24x. And 4 times 9 gives me 36. And then we still have the minus 5. We need to combine our like terms. So 36 minus 5 gives me 31. We are now in standard form. And you can see that then our value for a is 4, our value for b is 24, and our value for c is 31. Now in general, if I were to expand or take this vertex form into standard form, it would look a little bit more complicated because it would, it would deal with all of the variables. So it would have the form of y equals ax squared minus 2ahx plus 2h squared plus k. So when we do that, our a is the same as is a. Our b, however, is minus 2ah, and c is ah squared plus k. Now this is going to become important to us in, a, in some later lessons, so we'll be referring back to this piece, this comparison of our ABCs when in standard form versus in vertex form. In the last lesson we talked about how a graph that had been translated would be congruent to the equation of y equals ax squared. So we, we explored how the, an equation in, in vertex form was a congruent parabola to one in y equals ax squared, but we're also going to explore how the graph of an equation of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c is just a parabola congruent to the graph of y equals ax squared also, since a graph in a standard form and vertex form is still the same parabola, um, just in a different format. And so now saying that they're both congruent to the equation y equals ax squared. We're going to also look at applying these quadratic functions. And one equation that we're going to be using is y equals a negative 1 half g times t squared plus the initial velocity plus your initial height. Basically, what this problem is looking at is gravitational pull when you're throwing a ball or dropping something off a building. Those are all different types of problems that we'll be exploring. But before we do so, we need to just kind of look at what G stands for. That's the gravitation pull, either 9.8 meters per second squared or 32 feet per second squared. This T stands for time. V sub zero is your initial velocity when your time when t is zero, and your height when t is zero, or we say our initial height. So we're going to explore this as an equation that was derived from this one up here. Suppose a a thrown ball has height h equals negative 16 t squared plus 42 t plus seven. 
after t seconds. Find h when t equals 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. But before evaluating our height at the different times, let's just evaluate some things we can tell from this equation. We know that negative 16, it, it tells me that our problem is going to be in feet per second square because a negative 1 half times 32 would give me the negative 16. I know my initial velocity is 42 and my initial height is 7 and then it would be feet because we're of what gravitational value we gravitational pull we use. So let's go ahead and plug in our different values for t. When we look at this, we have an idea that after at, we started at 7 feet in the air and after one second our ball rises to 33. Then we know it, after two seconds it's coming down to 27 and then after three seconds it would be below ground at negative 11 and after four seconds it would be really below ground at a leg, negative 81 feet. We know that can't happen but that's just how the graph mathematically would look, not necessarily what it would look like in real life. So we kind of just talked about that part B right here and now they want us to graph the pairs T, H over the domain of the function. So please stop the video at this time and graph your, your parabola. The next part of this is to evaluate whether our rate of change is the same between a zero and one second as it is between one and two. And you know how to do that. We can go ahead and just calculate um, our, our rate of change by looking at our change in y over change in x. So let's take a look at our from zero to one. So that's 33 minus seven over one minus zero. And so that would give us 26 feet per second. And that's from 0 to 1. And now let's go from 1 to 2. So we're going to look at 27 minus 33 over 2 minus 1. And that's going to equal a negative 6 feet per second squared. So if you notice, from one, 0 to 1, I had 25, 26 feet per second squared. From 1 to 2, I had a negative 6 feet per second squared. So our ball is not moving at the same average rate as, as it progresses through time.